I collected 54 Sharia rulings on moralities and etiquette that should be taught in schools. But unfortunately, they aren't. And because no Muslim should live his life without learning these rules, if you didn't learn that in school, then you have to watch this video. Revelation has always been the reference for etiquette and moralities. Stop debating what morals are. Stop debating how societies should function. Bring your coffee and let's learn them directly from God himself. Number 1. In Quran chapter 49 verse 10, we learn that all believers are brothers. Doesn't matter what's their race, doesn't matter what's their color, doesn't matter what's their education level, what's their job, what's their family lineage. Number 2. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him explains this concept further in this hadith. There is no superiority for an Arab over an un-Arab, for an un-Arab over an Arab, for a white person over a black person, for a black person over a white person, except with righteousness. Whoever is more righteous is superior in the eyes of God. Mankind are from Adam and Adam is from dust. This is why only 15% of Muslims are Arab. Islam is not related to an ethnicity or a family or a culture group like other fake religions are. Islam is God's message to humanity without discrimination. Number 3. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, God doesn't judge you based on your body or how you look. God judges your heart and your deeds. Number 4. The rulings of the Sharia law is very harsh on arrogance. If in your heart you think that you are better than someone, you are taking a huge risk. Because the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, He will not enter paradise who has an atom weight of arrogance in his heart. Number 5. We also get the same meaning in Quran 57 verse 23. For Allah does not like whoever is arrogant and boastful. Number 6. Also the same meaning in Quran chapter 31 verse 18. Don't walk pridefully upon the earth. Surely Allah does not like whoever is arrogant and boastful. Remove any arrogance from your heart. Number 7. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, You're not a real believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. It's one thing to share what you don't need anymore. But the Prophet is demanding more from you. You should actually give your brother what you love, not your leftovers. You should treat your brother the way that you want to be treated. This fixes most social and trust issues. Imagine a contractor building for himself. How good will be the quality of that home? Imagine a doctor treating you as if he's treating himself or his family member. Best medical service he can offer. Imagine businesses giving you the best quality products and services instead of treating you like a bag of money or a number in their charts. How can a thief steal from your home if he loves you as he loves himself? How can someone be a rapist? And so on. This is the level of love and harmony expected to be found in an Islamic society. What about how to talk to each other? Number 8. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, never interrupted anyone talking to him. Even in hard discussions with disbelievers, he would let the other person finish first, then he would start teaching them. Number 9. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, A believer is not rude, nor a defamer. A believer does not curse or use foul language. And for people who are asking, Can I use swear words like with my friends? We don't mean any insult. We're just using these words for fun. And the answer is absolutely not. This is not the moral character of the believer. Number 10. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Whoever believes in God and the Day of Judgment should either say something nice or shut up. If you don't have something nice to say, then don't. Number 11. We can find the same meaning in Quran chapter 17 verse 53. Tell my believing servants to say only what is best. Satan certainly seeks to spread hatred among them. Indeed, Satan is a sworn enemy to mankind. Number 12. Quran chapter 14 verse 24 to verse 27. This is a good summary to this point. Saying a good word is like planting a good tree that will produce its fruits every while. Unlike a bad word, which is like a bad tree uprooted from the earth, having no stability at all. Number 13. 
We can find the same meaning in Quran chapter 2 verse 83. Speak kindly to people, establish prayer, and pay charity. Number 14. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The strong man is not the one who fights a lot. The strong man is in fact the one who controls himself and controls his anger. Number 15. A man came to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, and said, Give me an advice. The Prophet said, Don't be angry. And the man said, Okay, give me more advice. And the Prophet said again, never be angry. Again and again, several times. Anger and toxicity that we see these days, especially in Gen Z, are against the teachings of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. Please stop engaging in pointless online fights that will never benefit anyone. Number 16. We can find the same meaning in Quran chapter 3, verse 134. Those who donate during ease and hardship and who restrain anger and who pardon the people, Allah loves the doers of good. If you want Allah to love you, this is how you should behave. Donate during ease and hardship, restrain anger, pardon people. Number 17. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, I guarantee a house in the surroundings of paradise for a man who avoids arguing even if he was right. I guarantee a house in the middle of paradise for a man who avoids lying even if he was joking. And I guarantee a house in the upper part of paradise for a man who made his character good. There is a huge difference between answering someone who has a question or giving da'wah peacefully and between engaging in pointless fights with idiots on the internet every day. Learn where to draw the line. Number 18. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, expanded the definition of charity. Smiling in the face of your brother is charity. Advising good and advising against bad is charity. Giving direction to someone who is lost is charity. Helping a blind person reach his destination is charity. Removing obstacles from the road is charity. Even helping your brother refill his water is charity. All these are types of charity. And now you might ask, how many charities should I do every day? And the answer is in this hadith. Number 19. Inside every human, 360 joints. Do charity for each one of them. And by knowing what is the definition of charity, you now know how nice you should be all day just to fulfill this command from the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. Next, we need to talk about jealousy. Jealousy is one of the devastating social diseases. It starts with you having curiosity, wanting to know what everyone is doing in his life. What do they have? That applies to your friends, your neighbors, social media influencers, celebrities, and so on. Then you start to compare your life to their life. You become depressed. You become sad. Then you take it to the next level. Gossiping about them. Backbiting. Jealousy will burn your heart and will not affect them in any way. It's just you burning. Then to the next level. Wishing they lose what they have. Evil eye. Or even making fun of them. Dishonoring them to feel good about yourself or maybe spreading rumors about them. All that is haram from beginning to end. Let's read what God wants us to be. Number 20. Quran chapter 20 verse 131. Do not let your eyes crave what I have allowed some of them to enjoy. This is fleeting enjoyment of this worldly life, dunya. I test them with it. And your Lord's provision in the hereafter? is far better and more lasting. Number 21, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, A good Muslim should mind his own business and not look at what doesn't concern him. Don't worry about what your friends are doing in their private life. Don't worry about the life of influencers or celebrities. It will not benefit you in any way. Just mind your own business. Number 22, Quran chapter 49 verse 11 O believers, do not let some men ridicule others. They may be better than them. 
nor let some women ridicule other women. They may be better than them. Do not defame one another, nor call each other by offensive nicknames. Number 23. Quran 49.12 O believers, avoid many suspicions, for indeed some suspicions are sinful, and do not spy, nor backbite one another. It is like eating the flesh of your dead brother. Stop. Number 24. Regarding spreading rumors. Quran 49, number 6. O believers, if an evildoer brings you any news, verify it. So you do not harm people unknowingly. Then become regretful for what you've done. Do you know that according to tech jury, 62% of all internet information can be fake? 80% of you as adults have consumed fake news. Take care, you're part of this problem. When you read a random post online and you share it or retweet it without verification, you help spread rumors. And that is exactly the opposite of God's command in Quran 49, number 6. Anyway, that's almost half of what I've prepared for you. The remaining verses and hadith will be in part 2 of this video. If you think this content is useful, Help it spread by engaging with a like, comment, or share. And if you want to watch the second part of this video, click here. And if you want to watch our full playlist on Sharia Law, click down there. Thanks and Salaam Alaikum.